Hey YouTube, it's Echo Bear, and today I want to review an app for you guys that's called The Quest Keeper. Now before I go into anything about this app, let's get through the serious stuff. So The Quest Keeper is made by Tyson Ebel. If I said your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Help a lowly peasant on his journey to become a powerful dungeon master. Dodge spikes, knives, spiders, skeletons, lasers, saws, and more on your journey to collect rare coins and artifacts. Features: ten unique and challenging quests, tons of collectible, bleh, tons of collectible upgrades and items, infinite replay value in randomized, procedurally generated environments, game center leaderboards for bragging rights in the eternal quest, adorable voxel graphics, voxel, ha, box pixel. I see what you did there. I like it. A high quality musical score and endless dungeon running fun. Having trouble with the controls, options are available in the game settings to the right of the wizard in the starting area, which allow you to change swipe sensitivity or enable continuous drag mode. So the first thing I want to talk about with this app is how it looks. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's really pretty. Everything is uh, roguelike, randomly generated, so none of the maps ever look the same. None of the obstacles are ever the same. All of the lighting effects just make it feel kind of eerie and spooky but at the same time kind of magical and the particle effects from your staff and all of that and just everything else is just really wonderful like there's been a lot of love put into this app and it's really obvious so overall the visuals of this game are a huge bonus to me like everything is lighted so well everything just works with everything else that's going on it's box soul design and I just I really do love it. It's really just a lovable type of design that they chose to use. The next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay itself. It's pretty easy. The as I said earlier in serious time, they they gave different ways to control. I play with the stock controls, which is you swipe to change directions every time you want to move a different direction, you have to swipe in that direction, which it's a little hard, like, but that's the point. It's supposed to be hard. You're supposed to have difficulty getting through it. If you got through it really easily, there wouldn't be any replay value. So that I understand. But I use the standard controls. I've tried the others. They're not as intuitive to me, but they may work for other people better. So overall, the controls are really, really tight. I've never run off the edges because it didn't respond in time. Usually it was just me being like, whoops, that's a hole well and then just totally missing out on something that was happening so usually it's operator error if you fall off or get killed or etc 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 and as it said in serious time this game has so so many unlockables like everywhere you have different shoes you can unlock different robes you can unlock and different staffs staffs you can unlock and all of them do different things most of the time it's just aesthetic, but a lot of the items have specific things that'll help in have specific things that'll help in specific challenge modes. So like the spider challenge mode, for example, you have spiders chasing you, there are spider webs that slow you down, you buy the shoes that makes that will make it so you don't slow down in spider webs, and you get the like little staff thingy that slows spiders down and it makes it easier. So it's kinda like a power-up in a way, you only have to buy it once. You can watch ads to get more coins, or you can just play through the endless mode and get a bunch of coins that way. Also, all of those challenge modes I mentioned, you also have to unlock with coins. So it is kind of a grind to get coins, but as you get better, it gets easier and more fun to go along with. So it's a grind, but it's not an annoying grind, if that makes sense. The last thing I want to talk about is the sound design. The background music is really fun. It feels like an old adventure game, kind of. It sounds just wonderful. It's orchestrated. It's not 8-bit pixely music. It's actual instruments playing, I believe. And it also has like a bunch of sound effects for different things that happens. There's a chest sound effect, ending sound effect, like a whole bunch of sound effects that just work really, really well with everything that's going on. For everything that this game offers, I want to get a bit an 8 out of 10. It's really good. I totally recommend it. The reason, like I said, this rating system is kind of new, and I'm going to be really, really picky to give it that 9-10 range, but this is an absolutely wonderful game. 
I definitely recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Go play it and just go have fun running through a dungeon. So that's all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys. Oh, I haven't done this in a long time. I forgot my outro. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and comment down below. Hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Because... No, no, no.